When you study different probability distributions, either at school or at university, you're usually given definitions and formulas and then asked to apply them to solve certain problems. And almost never you are explained on how those formulas came around and from what examples were they derived, which I'm going to do in this video. So for our first example, suppose you wanted to cook a lot of cranberry jam to be stored uh, and used over a lengthy period of time. So you have a big jar where you boiled N berries. So now you have smaller cans that you want to fill with your jam and store them for future usage. So suppose that all this amount fitted inside little n of jars. And let us discuss the following interesting question. What is the probability of a given jar not containing a single berry? So a given jar contains no berries. So before we start, uh, let us declare the following assumption. We want all distributions of berries in jars have the same probability of occurring. So that means I can have all of my big N berries in one jar and none in others, or I can have them equally distributed and so on. We don't regard one distribution of berries more likely than any other. So then each berry has N choices. It has N jars that it can choose to be inside. So that means that in total we have N to the N possible distinct distributions. So by knowing simple combinatorics, we know that in total we have N to the N possible distributions of all of the big N berries into N jars. So now if we think about our question, we have a jar that remains empty and then we have all other jars. So that means that each berry now only has n minus 1 choices, right? We have fixed a certain jar and we do not allow any berries to go inside. So now they have to choose between n minus 1 remaining jars. So that means we have n to the minus 1 to the n possible distributions. So now basic probability follows. We have the total number of combinations and then we have the number of combinations that we are interested in. So the probability that we are interested in is simply a, a ratio of the two numbers. So we want to know how does this quantity behave as n becomes very big. So using simple algebra, we can rewrite this fraction like that. We can divide through by n and get this expression. So if you've done a bit of first year analysis, this formula naturally reminds you of the exponential. But for the exponential, this term here 
uh, in the denominator of the fraction and the exponent have to be the same. So how do we do that? Well, let us introduce lambda, which is going to be an average number of berries per jar, right? Then if we rewrite this formula in terms of lambda, we get that our probability is one, one minus lambda over n to the power n. So once more, this is our average, and this fraction, by a very well-known limit, tends to e to the minus lambda as n gets big. The next natural question that we ask is the probability for a fixed jar containing exactly one berry. Now, if this is our fixed jar, then this berry that's allowed to be inside can be chosen in n different ways. And then there are n minus one berries left and all of them have n minus one choices. So following a similar thinking uh, with the previous consideration, we arrive at this fraction. So then if we rearrange, we get this constant multiple outside. And again, if we tend n to infinity, the limit will approach lambda e to the minus lambda, where lambda is again that average that we have introduced. So you can see how, for our example, our probabilities coincide with what you have seen in Poisson distribution formula. So it is now an exercise for you to derive a formula for a given jar containing k berries and see that it is equivalent to the way you have seen this distribution defined. Based on our simple example, you can see that for us being able to apply Poisson distribution rules to a given probability setting, we want a large sample size, we want a lot of berries to be distributed because only then we will be close to this limit. And secondly, we want independence of events. So we want all distributions of berries to be possible. And once a given berry has found its jar, the next berry in line is, has an independent choice of a jar. It's independent of all other berries. So here you go. Now you know where these expressions come from approximately. And if you always think of this example, you can sort of remember what conditions you need in order to apply Poisson distribution for calculating your probabilities.